everybody welcome back to embrace the journey with Sharon and I have a repeat guest today Candace Belfer I'm I uh, when we had her on for her original show I told you I wanted to have her back on to talk more about uh, my jeans fit which is a foundation that she started a nonprofit it's related to weight and bullying and making life better for those um, that deal with those types of things. So, yay, welcome back. Thanks Thank so you. much for coming back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So, t talk to me about this because this this is a piece of your heart. Um, yeah. You know, we, we talked about, uh, you know, you, you starting the home training group and that was for yourself and um, because of your part of the journey, but it morphed into three this years, foundation. Yeah, three years ago I was um, looking up ribbons, diseases, and um, I was just like, God, I wonder what the color for obesity is. What could be the color? And I start going through the ribbons and I'm like, okay, we have like AIDS is red, breast cancer is pink, and everything, there isn't a disease that doesn't have color to it, mm -hmm. and I said, where's obesity? <laughs> when I got, when I, I was like searching all over in it, and there isn't one, it actually, wasn't. there wasn't, no, it was. And I'm, this was what year? It was like three years three ago. Three years ago, so 2010. 2010. Mm -hmm. yep. So I, it was a measuring tape, is what the ribbon was, a measuring tape mm. for the, like, obesity walk mm. or for whatever it was biggest loser measuring everything's a measuring tape and I thought there's nothing inspiring about a measuring tape because I'm not defined by a number right I'm never gonna be a number and I'm there and change is not gonna happen if you keep giving everyone a number mm -hmm. and basing that average on it BMI everything is based on numbers and at the end of the day I'm a person and I deserve a color <laughs> there has to be a color for obesity and then it was trying to you know really find out what the color was and and then I think because I was bullied as a kid for being obese and um, you know it got silenced mm -hmm. and there was a lot that came a lot of poor choices that came as the consequence mm -hmm. for never sticking up for myself for thinking that I was worth less um, for allowing myself to believe that I was the things that people were saying that I was because at the end of the day, let's face it, when somebody makes fun of somebody because of their size, they're not saying something that isn't true. But this happens to be a stigma that's still acceptable and that wasn't okay to me. And so... Yeah, talk, because it comes from so many places. I it mean, does. It, it does. It, it really does. And, and it is unfortunate that a lot of it does come from the parents that don't know any better as well. Yeah. It's sad. We, we a lot of behaviors we learn at home and... And some of the other things, they're just, kids are just mean. It's just yeah. a fact of life. But, you know, I, I found it ironic how we can make, we, we can't make fun of all these other things, somebody because of their color, their religion, their, you know, sexual size, belief, sexual yeah. orientation. But we can still just say, you know, look at that girl because her butt's so big. And you can say it out loud and other people are going to join in and laugh. And you know what? Sometimes it's just not okay. Yeah. It's not. Um, not sometimes. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not. You yeah. No, no, it's never okay. Yeah. It's yeah. never okay. But there is that because it's something that many don't talk about or because it's still loud. Like I can be with my children and I, I hear the cartoons making fun of each other because there's no definite line that's drawn today. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem, and that's yeah. why I say sometimes a problem, because even though it's all the time a problem, sometimes it's still getting by. Mm -hmm. And it's and, and even at the, the broad band, we're still allowing it to happen, and nobody's doing anything about it. Yeah. And You are. I am. I definitely am. So I started an organization called My Jeans Fit. We have... Um, Spell it. At, M Y G E N E S, and that's because of your DNA, your genes. Mm -hmm. We're not all made to be a size two. Yeah. And um, I think that I love it. I love Thank that. You. By the way. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I think that um, you know everybody needs to find their genes and wear them the best that they can, and find their better health. And knowledge is power, for sure. And so if we equip young children to make the best decisions. Mm -hmm. 
uh, good choices, sound choices, not all the time, because nobody's perfect. It's Rebection. learning, yeah, we're all here to learn and grow, and right. we have to grow from contrast. It, it just, it's just the way it is. Right. However, right? However, yeah. if we do implement, you know, that one in five children are obese, so we can... It is frightening, some of the statistics that are out there now. It is really, really frightening. Like you said, you brought up The Biggest Loser, and I know Oprah's had some shows on it. Um, and it, I'm scared. It is scary. It's scary because proportion sizes are really, really large. Really large. And, you know, um, you, the, you eat that much, you train yourself to eat that much every time. And what's next? But it's all the other diseases that come with it. It's these young children that you're seeing that are definitely overweight. It, it's a fact. Definitely yeah. overweight. And then you've got asthma and you've got all of these other things that are tying into it. And that's a that's what scares me, is that I feel we are intelligent human beings. Mm -hmm. And I feel it is our responsibility to educate ourselves. And I feel that there's so much information out there now that shame on us. Shame on us. If we, if we allow our children um, to get into this area, I, I, I get that people are, are going to fight it, like you said my genes, your DNA, the different people are going to be different sizes. But there is a point where we, education related to the foods we eat, what, what soda that does all to us, to what, be, all of that. We have, um, you know, um, emotional strategies yeah. because essentially obesity is an emo the root of obesity in most cases is emotional. So I believe all addictions. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. emotional. Okay. So after emotional for obesity, what you're saying, the scary part is, is that it becomes it becomes a disease if not addressed at the emotional level, meaning that we have hypertension, heart yeah. disease, diabetes. Um, and children. Yes, 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 yes. It's on the rise. And yeah. there's no reason for it. Yeah. There is no reason for it. Um, a lot of it also has to do with, um, you know, the social media and um, the video games and parents working, the economy not being so great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jim, Jim. It's getting cut in yeah. <laughs> some schools. The after school programs, the kids are just sitting around. Why not get some great fitness programs? And then so we, we have um, implemented from the bullying programs, including obesity, not excluding everything else, but including that in mm -hmm. so that finally that, that gets heard as well. Mm -hmm. um, all the way from, you know, preschool level all the way up to the high school and college. Uh, we have different pro assembly programs. Um, Which I, I want to say thank you. I want to just stop for a moment and say thank you for that. Because we, we are and believe because of what we're taught mm -hmm. as children. And uh, my beliefs and my worthlessness came from what I was taught. And it came through teachers. Some of it came through teachers. And I don't know your entire story, but I'm assuming some part of it came from that too because you're not supported because sometimes the peers that are around us, and I'm talking adult peers, they don't get it either, what you're going through. Um, so going into the schools... And teaching this, like, that's how important it is. It's really important. It's important to get to the parents, the PTOs, um, mm -hmm. and also to um, families. And saving lives on it, two levels. Mm -hmm. With the bullying, but because kids mm -hmm. are taking their lives. Right. And with the health issue of, of just becoming healthier. Well, the one thing to explain that a lot of people don't see with obesity, but you kind of know, but you don't, is that it's why I got so actively involved with it is because you, someone who's obese is walking the longest death sentence. See, because someone who gets picked on because they're bullied, called, you know, uh, something derogatory, slut, something like that. That girl, she goes home and she instantly kills herself, hangs herself. Whatever the tragic end is, it is from that bullying situation. When somebody is obese and they're bullied, they go home and they do the very thing they shouldn't be doing, and that's eating. Yeah. And their voice becomes silence. And I know for myself, and I know it's very similar to today, even though I am 38 years old, um, 
the teachers did nothing. Um, in some cases, you do do something, but in a lot of cases with obesity, it's hard because you say one thing and then other people say, oh, you told, and now everybody else is saying, she just said, and now everyone else is calling you that, and now you can't walk up the hallway without people mooing at you or something happening. And, yeah. you know, that's your body. That's your space. You become disconnected from that, and then you... You set yourself up to settle for a lifetime of all these things you never think you could be, and it's just not true. Yeah. And so um, obesity bullying needs to be addressed because it's the longest death sentence yeah. that anyone can choose to walk, and I say choose, because it is a choice. What you put in your mouth, you need to be responsible for. I Decisions agree, yeah. need to be made. I do agree with you on that, and that's where the education part comes mm -hmm. in. And because a lot of these children, unfortunately, they eat what their parents put in front of them. And at a certain age, you can start making the choices, or you can rebel at a young age, or when you go to the supermarket with mom and dad and she wants to go down the center aisle, you go down the outer aisle and, and get the lettuce stuff and get the salad and get the you chicken. You have to and know get, that the outside right. of the supermarket is where you're going to find the Very whole true. grains and the whole foods. Farmers and that the markets. inside you're going to find the processed foods that comes with education. Yeah. I also say as far as the fast food goes, mom chooses because it's easier to go to McDonald's or another fast food restaurant. There are other solutions that these fast food places, I'm not saying choose fast food, but if you're equipped and your child has that knowledge to know, hey mom, I'm not going to get the chicken nuggets today. I'm going to get this with this because it's going to be a better choice. Mm -hmm. You know, you can empower a child's voice with choice. And yeah. children normally, their taste buds aren't developed to always eat those bad things. They don't know that. A child, they don't overeat. Their parents overfeed. Yeah. They don't overeat. Yeah. They only take in what they need. It's when they're not moving, the same as an adult, mm -hmm. you have the problem, right? Because you have the calories in, calories out, mm -hmm. and fat becomes stored energy, and you wear it. I've worn it, and you know, and it becomes a vicious cycle. But, but kids don't do that unless they're taught that. You do what you're taught. It's learned. Yeah, and I... I um I forget where I saw it, but it was a woman, um, and her son was uh, uh, young and very obese, and uh, she's, she created the cycle because it's her baby, and she was saying, it's my baby, and you know she had other kids and stuff, and he was the only one that was heavy, and he was the last child, and he was the type that would, if he couldn't have something, would whine and cry and this, that, and other thing. And that is how, and so she gave him food and she keeps doing that. And it was like, so she's almost like taught him that if you want, you get food. And, and now because of that, I think that change, that changes our body. And especially in a child that changes his body system as well. I would think to kind of crave that food. Right. Well, fat finds friends. Hmm. So you create more wow. fat cells. Say that again. Fat finds friends. Wow. It does. It creates, it populates, it creates more cells. And those cells just repopulate and they you get bigger. Wow. <laughs> you do. Yeah, I never, I, I don't think I've ever heard that before. So then. Yeah, and then when that happens, um, basically those cells are always waiting to make more. Yeah. <laughs> so that's with the cycle of going up and down, gaining, losing, gaining, losing, the yeah. roller coaster. You never really get off the ride. It's all control, moderation, um, you know, and not looking to be a size two. If yeah. you're not made to be a size two, don't strive to be a size two. Yeah. There's no after picture. Because if you go back to any, like I always say that to everybody, like really go find all, every before picture and after picture and go find one of the people and ask them. Let's go find out what they look like today. How many people really sustain that? It's less than 5%. Mm. There actually, there's a study, it's less than 5% that anyone can ever keep that weight off. Mm. They just don't do it. And the 5% of the people that actually do do it are people that never attempted to diet before. Yeah. And, well, in, in our bodies are changing. I mean, uh, and I won't just say this real quick, and then I want to get back to uh, my genes fit and talk a little bit more about that and, and what it is that you're educating and how you're getting into the systems and stuff. But I know for myself, I, you know, I say to people, our bodies are so cool. You're born, you have a baby's body, and then you have a toddler's body, and then you have a teenage body, and then you have a 20-something year old. Your body's always changing, and your hormones are changing. It is constantly changing. 
if we do not change and keep our, you know, sedentariness or, or feeding it the same things, it, it's going to it's going to kind of turn on you at some point in life uh, in the direction maybe that, that you don't want to go. So maybe somebody that was slender or whatever and could eat french fries and do whatever, as they age, a lot of times they're, and they keep, if they keep going down that path of unhealthy choices, their body will catch up with them. Right, you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, their body Plain will catch simple. up with them. So, so tell me a little bit more about you know, get who are how are you getting it into the schools? How can if anybody's watching this, how can they find out more about possibly getting it into their school or into their after hours program or whatever it is? Because it's so important. Yeah, um, we have mygeansfit.com.org.net where we have every domain. and again on our website. Uh huh. So and 800-979-4180. They can always call and speak with anyone that can. Um, you know, give them more information. We send information by email to any schools um, that are looking to implement any community programs for the families, for the PTOs, any bullying programs, um, dealing with obesity and all the other forms of, of um, obesity. We have a certified obeus bully specialist, um, so that's very important, and we also have a licensed clinical social worker. Mm -hmm. So um, now, is it an after-hours program? Right we have now? all different programs. So that when they call, they would get um, all the different programs. Okay. Um, a, there's various different materials that they would get marketing materials that cover all the different types of programs, and then they can pick which program or all of the programs that they feel is necessary for um, for the, for their school. So um, there's after school. Give me programs, a give yeah. me a give me a success right now. Pick pick a, a school or something and tell me, you know, give us a little bit of okay. Here's where they were. They came in and and discovered our program, whatever way they discovered it. I love a church actually. Not a, okay. I, I do. I love. I love. <clears throat> I'll give you a school it's really a community fast. Community right there. Church, right. Yeah. That we do communities too. But um, the I love the Freehold Regional Town uh, School school district um, in New Jersey um, they bought in all the different high school levels and all these kids actually had um, disabilities mm. so um, they about were ranging from being able to change something <laughs> about yourself they were ranging from um, mild autism to severe autism ADHD behavioral issues all all different uh, disabilities um, ages um, it's like 11 to 18 mm. and they came into the auditorium and we did our program worth your weight and um, I, I, like four boys cried like through that and you know after the questions that came in it just it didn't stop the church I really I really like doing the church because this church that I did um, in New Brunswick New Jersey they were all Hispanic um, they were Mexican and they had so many questions about food. Now I came with, um, each program runs alongside, depending on the needs of what the requirements are, you know, we, uh, I often speak, um, and then for that particular program, we bought in a registered dietitian and, um, a figure body personal trainer to address the kids yeah. on fitness and also um, the registered dietitian on um, the food, on uh, better choices. Yeah. Um, we definitely made a lot of good empowering suggestions to those kids and it's just probably about three more months I'm going to go back and follow up. I actually, when I left, I told all of them to do something remarkable, yeah. definitely do something remarkable and one thing that they can do for their community was to create a cookbook, um, you know, yeah. to make foods that were good for kids to begin to, you know, teach their parents how yeah, to prepare. Yeah, because that community, that the community, Hispanic uh, community, it is. Food is a very important. It was really uh, important. It used to be in my family, Italians, and, and now we, but now in our society, you still see it very strongly in, in the Spanish, Hispanic, you know, that type of community. Food plays a big role in it. A lot of the kids were complaining that their parents, they were worried about their parents and their parents' health from all the fried foods, um, wow. the rice, 
the fried bananas, the way that their parents were preparing some of the foods. Yeah. Um, and you know, they they actually wanted to help their parents and or start to implement in their house. So how do they do that? Yeah. And so Great you know, question, we they right? got we got amazing questions. They got answers. They felt. I mean, everybody. It, 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 the church met really late in the evening, so I think we started with them at 6 p.m. and we didn't leave till like 11:30 yeah. at night. These kids were on a roll. We made them each sign their names to the wall to commit to change, and we and we follow back it up with, with them. Starts with commitment. Starts with a commitment. Yeah. Sign yeah. your name to it. Say you're gonna do it and make it happen. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that we were able to talk more about this part of what you're putting out into the world. My jeans fit. G-E-N-E-S. And again, go to the website. You can find uh, Candace's information there, both related to um, the home group, the home training group, as well as this. And if you are a church, if you are a library, if you are a school, this is the type of program that we need to be getting out there right now on a multitude of levels. So it's out there. There are people that are creating uh, wonderful programs that um, we can bring in and educate our children, educate the adults, have the children educate the adults, and so on and so forth. It's important. Open your eyes. Educate yourself. We need to embrace all of what's going on in our world right now. And I just want to say, we actually take a lot of our fitness professionals, wellness professionals from, we take all of them from home training groups. Yeah. So oh, they're already um, so tied certified, in. they're yeah. background checked, and they're ready to go. So, I mean, as far as programming goes and implementing any kind of structure for fitness in schools, we have every instructor. Um, Very cool. So it's all there. Yeah. We're ready to go. Well, thank you again thank you. for coming in. Remember to embrace the journey because when you do, life becomes amazing. Sure does.